Today, we're looking at the Microfreak Chord Oscillator. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Rick to Break. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. So here on the channel, we've covered quite a few of the Microfreak's different oscillator types. However, one that we have not touched on, and one that I actually haven't really seen covered too much by anyone, is the chords oscillator. This oscillator type allows you to play an entire chord with one key on the Microfreak. Now, you might think initially, like, that's cool, but it's not that useful. And, well, first, let me bring your attention to the fact that you can sample those chords and use them however you'd like on other pieces of gear. But secondly, and more importantly, I think, there are a few things that you can do on the Microfreak to make these chords sound a bit more interesting. So let's take a peek at what our controls do. So the wave knob just simply changes the type of chord that you're playing. Let's run through those real quick. Starting off, we have octave. Then we have fifth. After that, we have suspended fourth. After that, we have a minor chord. Minor seventh. Minor ninth. Minor eleventh. 69th? I'm not sure what this one is. Someone help me out. That's the only one I don't know, I promise. After that is major 9th. Then we have major 7th. And finally, major. So the wave knob is how you choose which chord type you actually want. I'm going to leave it on major right now. Moving on to the timbre knob, this controls the inversion and the transposition of the chord. So, what that means is it's basically controlling, first of all, where we are on the keyboard, the higher we turn it, the farther up we go, but also the inversion of the chord. So, let me switch to a different oscillator type real quick here and turn on polyphony. So, for instance, C major would be a C, an E, and a G. That's our root position. Then, first inversion would be E, G, and C. And then our second inversion would be G, C, and E. Let's go back to the chord oscillator now. So you can actually turn this knob and it will shift us through the octave and between all of the different inversions for that octave. Super handy. Last up is the shape knob, and this actually controls which waveform we are using to generate our sound. Again, super cool. So yeah, those are our three main controls for the chord mode oscillator. Uh, pretty cool, like I said, really nice and useful for sampling. However, let's go ahead and get into the digital patch bay here because just by modulating uh, these last two controls here, the timbre and shape, we can get some really interesting sounds out of the Microfreak. Also really quick, you can turn on paraphonic mode on the chord oscillator. But because each uh, key will still play a chord, it sounds really messy. Instead, if you want to kind of amp up the sound, what I recommend doing is using unison mode. So hold shift and then press paraphonic. Now have a listen.
pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave unison mode on for the remainder of this video. Anyway, let's get into the digital patch bay. So the first thing I want to do is send my LFO to the timbre knob to modulate the inversion and the transposition of our chord. So let's uh, do that. We're going to scroll to LFO and timbre. Timbre already has a, a set destination point on the uh, patch bay. I'm going to set that to, let's say, 48, I don't know, sure. 47.4, fine. Now that doesn't sound too great. That's because we need to slow our LFO way down. You can see this little white light here is lit up. That means that the LFO is currently synced to the tempo of the sequencer. I don't want that. So I click in the rate knob. Now the LFO is unsynced and I can freely control the speed. There you go, I have it set to 0 0.22 hertz, and you can hear it when it engages, and it goes up to the, uh, you know, whatever amount we have our patch bay set to on the timbre knob. So now let's lock in where we want the starting position of the timbre knob to be. This gets really fun when we start noodling around the keyboard. Don't forget, you've always got that nice analog filter to play with as well. So that right there sounds pretty cool. But what happens when we start modulating the waveform knob as well and actually changing the sound itself? Let's find out. So to modulate the shape knob, I'm actually going to use the cycling envelope, which we can basically use as a second LFO if we want to. So I'm going to hold assign one and set that to the shape knob because the shape knob does not actually have uh, its own dedicated destination in the patch bay. So now that shape is set to assign one, let's go ahead and set the cycling envelope to assign one. And I'm gonna turn it up to, let's try 50-ish again, 49.8, sure. Gonna make sure that my cycling envelope is set to run now. And I'm going to uh, hold down a key and start playing with the shape of the envelope to dial in uh, the amount of modulation that we want. <laughs> as cool as that is, that's uh, not quite what I'm after. I'm gonna give it a little bit of uh, sustain at the top there too. That's pretty fun. Super fun. So while the chord oscillator is admittedly not the most useful oscillator type on the Arteria Microfreak, it's still a lot of fun. And just like most of these concept videos that I do on the Arteria Microfreak, we barely even began to scratch the surface of what is actually possible using uh, the patch bay and all of the different controls and sources for modulation destinations. Um, you know, you can even modulate like the LFO rate. You can modulate uh, your modulations even. I've done a video on that. So I'm sure that you can get some absolutely bonkers sounds out of this chord oscillator, but... <laughs> Cool. 
Yeah, I quite like that. So I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, of course, you know where that dislike button is. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.